Hi class, this is Tina Rapp, your instructor for HLT362, and we are working on Module 2. I wanted to give you a walkthrough of how to calculate the z-scores and the probabilities for your population and sampling distribution Excel worksheet. For starters, question A is asking you for a z-score, and I pasted in the formula here that you would need to calculate a z-score. Basically, you are just looking to take um, the x value minus the mean over the standard deviation. To show your work for this, I think the easiest way would be for you to insert a text box. So what you do is you click insert text box and then you can just create that text box anywhere you want and you can show me your work in here. So for the first one a z-score, I would just do something like z equals 108 minus the mean which was 100 divided by 8 equals and give me your answer and then type that answer in the box over here. And that way you're showing me your work, you're going to get full credit and I know exactly what to look for in case you made a mistake. The second part for the probability, there's not a whole lot of work you need to show me but I'm going to walk you through what to do on those. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the um, course. This is the course and when I click in the course I'm going to click on questions for instructor module 2 and I posted this example here population and sampling distribution the first thing that you want to do is click this link at the top because that brings up our Z table I'm going to show you how to use that okay, for starters I have a couple examples here this is a normal distribution okay, and on a normal distribution basically you have your mean in the middle and your standard deviation of 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2 and this is kind of showing you the picture of that Pretty much what you're doing with a z-score is you are looking to see where those scores fall on your standard distribution. So I give you an example here. If this is a normal distribution and the mean is 100 with a standard deviation of 5, then 105 would actually be at a standard deviation of 1, and the score 95 would be at a standard deviation of negative 1. So basically those are the z-scores for those. So let's say I wanted to know the probability of a score greater than 105. I would look up that z-score in the table that I gave you and try to identify where that is. I usually start by drawing a picture of what that looks like. If I know that 105 is a standard deviation of 1, because I subtracted the mean from it and divided by the standard deviation, and I wanted to know the probability of getting a score greater than that, then this pink area is that probability. Now that pink area does not cross the mean line, that means I would be looking up a tail value. So I go to my Z table, and I'm going to find 1. Now a Z score of 1 in the tail is 0.1587. So therefore, the probability of a score greater than 105 is 0.1587. I have a second example here using the same data. If I want to know the probability of a score less than 102.5, well, 102.5 was half a standard deviation. Again, using the formula that I showed you in the Excel sheet. I'm looking for less than that. Now this time when I shade less than 102.5, you'll notice it does cross the mean line. That means I would be looking up a body value. So I am going to look up a 0.5 z-score in the body. So I click back to my table and here's a z-score of 0.5. Proportion in the body is 0.6915. So that would be the probability of a score less than 102.5. If I wanted to know a score between two values, I figure out the z-score of both of those. So for example, if I want to know a probability of a score between 95 and 105, well I would calculate the z-scores first and that would be negative 1 and 1. And now these values don't go off to the sides infinitely, they actually cross the mean and stop in both directions. That would mean I would use column D. I'm going to find the, the probability from the mean to one standard deviation and I'm going to double it because I have two of those areas. So I want to look up a standard deviation of one 
between the mean and z-score. So that's 0 0.3413. If I double that, I get 0.6826. So that is the probability of getting a score between 95 and 105. Now hopefully that will help you, because if I click back to my Excel spreadsheet here, hopefully that will help you with these questions. Right. For example, here I'm going to find the z-score of 108. Now down here I'm going to find the probability of getting a score higher than 108. As long as I know the z-score and I can picture what that looks like on the distribution, I can determine whether that's a body value, a tail value, or a score between the mean and that z-score. And I do the same thing for each of these. Now notice some of these are also the z-score that you calculated up here that you can use. Some of them are not, and you'll have to do that again. Hopefully this helps you determine how to figure out these answers on your Excel spreadsheet. Thank you, and good luck. As always, please post questions to the QFI if you need additional help.